I haven't got my degree yet, and that's something that's really important to me. Um, and then you look at how close we are to, to doing something special there. Um, you know, so that's definitely the hard part of leaving. Um, you know, but got to follow my dreams and how to do his best for me. A lot of good football players there. Were you kind of disappointed in your production, or do you kind of understand it was just the context of the offense with so many good players? You know, it's all about the team, man. You know, I, I had a pretty good year production-wise, and uh, you know, we won a lot of football games, did a lot of stuff at Georgia that um, we haven't done in a while there, and it was just special to be a part of something like that. Were there enough footballs to go around, though? Yeah, I mean, when you look at some of the backs we had and the amount of times we ran the football, um, you know, just being able to block for some of those guys was something special too. You know, not not everybody gets to say they block for Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb. So, um, you know, and Holyfield and uh, DeAndre Swift as well. So we had a lot of good players, and um, you know, there was games where we had to block and do it well to win games, and, and that's what we did. How much does that that you actually do appreciate? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big part of playing tight end position. You've got to be able to do it. I was going to ask you, how much did that pick up for you, Isaac, and, and how big do you want to play it in the league? We know you can catch passes and run routes, but what about the blocking? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a it's a huge part of the position. you got to be able to do it, and you got to be able to hold up against, um, you know, big defensive ends. And, um, you know, so that's something I take a lot of pride in. You know, did a lot at Georgia, so, um, you know, I got a lot of good experience there that, I'll continue to, to grow on and get better at. I think for some of you guys have watched you play, how do you describe yourself and describe your game? Um, I'm a guy that can do it all. You know, I've lined up you know, in line, H back roll, split out wide. Um, you know, I call a lot of passes and, and block a lot as well. So I'm a balanced tight end, I guess you could say. Um, you know, I try to emulate my game after a guy like Jason Witten, um, and Jordan Reed, Travis Kelsey's in the world. Isaac, well, you know, did you talk to the NFL draft board advisory at all? And if so, what did they say before coming to the combine? Um, yeah, so I, I got the uh, you're talking about the letter, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the letter advised to stay in school. What was your, what was your thought on that? Um, you know, unless you're a sure fire, you know, first round guy, yeah, you know, they typically a lot of that. So, um, a lot of coaches here have got to You know, it's just something I decided to do anyways. Do you realize how deep the comp is of training? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good players in this class. Um, you know, but every year there's going to be a lot of good guys coming out. You know, you don't get invited to an event like this or... Uh, we don't have an opportunity like this if you're not a good player. So, a lot of good tight ends in this class. What's the type of thing that when you watch Travis Kelsey and you try to take from this game? Just how hard he plays. Um, you know, he's a competitor. They look to him a lot, you know, to get first downs and score touchdowns. And, um, you know, I think that's the way the tight end positions evolving now. Um, you see you see a lot of teams with a lot of good tight ends and, and guys that look to to make plays. And, um, he's a special player for them, for sure. I saw you recover a fumble against Tennessee. <laughs> score. Was that your favorite play? I mean, it's wild. I don't know about favorite. Um, definitely the most odd play I've ever scored on in my career. Um, if you watch it, though, I didn't even celebrate in the end zone because I knew I knew the conversation I was about to have with Coach Smart once I got to the sideline. You should have said you called it that way. <laughs> you know, if you want to look at it that way, Oh, man, absolutely, that's what, we, that's what we call it. Well, one thing I also noticed, the clock took seven seconds to run that 40. Uh, I'm assuming know. you'll run a little better. I don't know about all that. All I remember is I was gassed running down the field. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad I turned a negative play into a positive play and uh, you know, made something good of that. That was cool. Thank you. You mentioned Jason Whitney. He didn't want to come in. Honestly, I, I, I didn't know if it was true or not. You know, I saw it on Twitter. and. Um, you know, and then I saw a bunch of reports of it and saw that it's true. You know, great for him. I think that's that's really cool. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great player. You know, role role model for me growing up, and uh, you know, a guy that I'd like to emulate my career. Like, playing on just having a great season. You try to focus on season. Got the Jaguars, uh, Seahawks, Vikings, Lions. Um, you know, a couple other teams. I, I don't have. Them. Exactly memorized yet, but Pittsburgh. just name a few. No, sir. Well, well, you know, uh, Alabama is a big, you know, it's a big, uh, uh, yeah. a big I think Georgia is very close. Um, yeah, we got a lot of depth now, a lot of young guys that, that played last year, and a lot of guys that really helped the team this year. Got a lot of experience on the offensive line, experienced quarterback, um, some really talented receivers and running backs. So, um, and I think this this might be a special year for Georgia for sure. Did you feel at times you were underutilized on the field yeah, sometimes I mean, playing in Georgia? Every, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that. You know, for us, it's all about you know winning games and, and however they wanted to use me. You know, I was all for it. Um, the team comes first at Georgia. And, um, you know, when the ball's thrown to me, I try to make a play on it and make most of my opportunities. What did you tell Eli Wolf about transferring to Georgia? He said you you gave him a call to give him an idea what to expect. 
Yeah, you know, I think I told them that, uh, you know, Coach Coley is a big tight end guy. He loves to use the tight ends. I think they're going to throw it around a lot more with Coley. Um, you know, so I told them to be excited about that. Um, you know, at the time when I declared, the tight end room was looking pretty thin, so he's got a, um, an opportunity to play right away and step in and, and uh, you know, catch a lot of passes. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I told them. You know, there's some special stuff happening See, in Georgia. That's, that's and, you know, they're always going to be a top program from here on out. Um, just because the way they recruit and the culture that we've set there. And, um, I thought it was a great opportunity for him to, to step in. Did you give it a second thought when Coley was promoted? Uh, I, mean, I know that was pretty cool. I think you'd already declared by then, but was there a part of you that was like, man, maybe I should come back, or was it too late at that point? No, it was too late at that point. I already, I already made up my mind. There wasn't nothing that was going to sway me at that point. But, um, you know, if I'm a tight end right now in the, in the Georgia system, I'd be pretty excited for Coley's going to play. What's your favorite route to run? Uh, my favorite play uh, route to run, I guess you could say, is, um, you know, probably a vertical seam route. Um, really, it's just a read. If it's a too high safety, you take the middle, it's one high, you stay in the seam. And uh, usually it's open most of the time. So that's what's under part of your game? Probably just, you know, the receiving aspect. I think I got really good hands. Um, had the highest catch rate on our team. Um, only it's dropped one ball in the year, so um, yeah, as many times as I got targeted, like a and a lot of drops, I would say my hands is probably um, you know, the most underrated part. Isaac, why are Georgia players a good fit for the Patriots offense, you think? <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a culture thing. I think the Patriots have a really good culture, and um, you know, that's, why they, that's why they win football games. And I think Georgia's got a really good culture, too. Um, you know, we practice the right way, we set a standard of how we play, and I think that translates um, you know, it's kind of to what they do. And I think that's why you've seen a lot of uh, dogs go to the Patriots. What You're obviously doing? a little bit different frame than Rob Gronkowski guy's been there for a long time. Right. But yeah, how would you describe your game? And are there any similarities in terms of being that sort of dual threat that you obviously have? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the, the, you know, with me and him, I think we both catch the ball well. Um, we both block well. And obviously, i got to improve in a lot of areas you know, to, to eventually be on that level. Um, he's a great tight end, one of the best of all time. But, um, yeah, you know, I think our styles of player are the same. Obviously, like different body type. Um, when, you know, but I've been willing to go get the ball and willing to block it just like he does. Have you spoken much to Sony or Isaiah? We've been like that from a few years ago in terms of their experiences in New England. I really have, and I've been so busy at this point training and, and um, you know, getting ready for interviews and in the combine, so I haven't had a chance to really reach out to those guys much, but um, I definitely will once this whole process is you know, kind of wrapped up and you know, I'll be able to pick their brain a little bit more. Do you feel like the style of offense that you guys ran translates to the pro game, especially at your position? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're a pro style offense. Um, a lot of the terminology we use is, is what they use um, you know, in the pros in the NFL, so uh, a lot of stuff will transfer over, which is good. You know, it's a little less of a learning curve. Um, you know, but some teams use terminology that um, you know we might call something and they might call something else so you know there's there's going to be a little learning curve as far as that but, um, but for the most part football is football and it's just a you know, just a mix up of the names that you gotta take you mentioned training what have you been doing to, to prepare for the combine um just been been running um, 40s you know getting getting more explosive um that's, you know, that's been my biggest thing is I want to run fast yeah well I mean um, so I went to like XP in Boca Raton they, uh, with Tony Villani, and he's, you know, he's pretty well known for getting guys ready for the 40. And you know, I've had a great experience there, been working hard, and I'm looking to you know, put up some pretty good numbers. With that preparation, are you ready for the NFL, and if so, why? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's something I've been training for my whole life. Um, you know, since since I can remember, age four, playing tackle football, um, it's been a dream of mine, and um, you know, I feel like all all of that preparation, all that work, all those memories have led up to this point, and I'm ready for the next challenge. At this point, when did you realize that you're at the combine, that you're ready for the NFL? When did you realize when you got here that you were ready, that you were here to hear? Um, you know, it's it's pretty crazy. It's a pretty surreal experience. Um, you know, especially because the, the week's so busy, and you're up early and up late, and um, you know, I think it's finally set in that. You know, I'm at the NFL yeah, Combine. Um, you know, I'm one of you know 330 something players in the, in the whole nation. That's, that's pretty special. I'm blessed to be here. And, um, you know, excited to represent Georgia and excited to represent myself. I think Nicole Hardman was saying he he kind of wished that the Georgia Florida game was a home and home. 
because it makes robberies more personal. Are there a lot of guys in Georgia that might share that sentiment about maybe wanting to play in the swamp and get more home and homes like that? Yeah, I think I can. I think I can definitely see that. Um, you know, it definitely adds more to the robbery. However, you know, being a guy that used to live in Jacksonville, um, you know, it was pretty cool to play in that stadium and, and, and play in the what they call the biggest cocktail party in the in the country. Um, you know, where they split the stadium half and half, and you know, that's a pretty cool experience to uh, to go down there and play in that environment. But um, you know, I also think a home and home game would be pretty pretty cool too. Uh, what is your time to time, man? You know, he's he's a special player. He's done it for a lot of years. And, you know, he's you know one of the best of all time. Uh, just the way he sets up routes um, and tax leverage is, is pretty special. And um, you know, he's a guy that you know, I'd love to be able to learn some stuff from. I already have just watching his film in college. And, um, and he's a special player. Isaac, what is it you would want? Uh, I have. What is it you would want the uh, NFL coaches and GMs to know about you, both personally and on the field? Um, I think the biggest thing I want them to know is that I love the game of football. You know, this is something that um, yeah, I've been doing my whole life, and uh, it's it's what I eat, sleep, and breathe. And um, so I want them to know that for sure that you know football is super important to me. And um, you know, they're just going to get a guy that's going to constantly fight. You know, constantly work hard, and I'm going to help them win football games. A lot of people are going to wonder if you got a draft grade to come back, why you win anyway. Is it is it a kind of deal where how much more could you have improved, or would you be content with a second or a third round selection? Just why you win against the draft recommendation, I guess, is what I'm asking. Um, you know, for me, it was I felt like I had played enough football games, put up enough good tape, um, and physically and mentally I was ready for the next step. You know, obviously those evaluations are pre-combine before they get to know you as a person. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of factors that go into it, you know, to where you can rise, you know, in the, with that draft status. But, um, you know, it was something I just felt like I was ready to do, and I'm um, ready for the next challenge. And so I went ahead and made that decision. So you're trying to put up some big numbers, and you have a charity attached to these numbers. Can you explain that and tell us what some of your goals are? You said you want to run fast. What is, what is your goal there? What's your number of reps? And how's the charity factor into this? Um, so with the charity, uh, I got a um, – it's tied in with Pledge It. And what people can do is they can um, donate money to my Pledge It, which goes – all the proceeds go to the – Northeast Food Bank of Georgia, and my, I set a goal of 15 bench reps. If I meet that goal or surpass it, all the money will get donated to um, the Northeast Georgia Food Bank. So um, that's kind of a cause that you know, I wanted to raise money for because I went through um, some tough times you know, at, at a young age, and you know we relied on that. At point. So you know, I thought, you know, what not a better idea than to give back to something that helped our family out, you know, in a tough financial time. So um, that was kind of the idea behind that. And then as far as running fast, I want. I want to be in the four six. Um, well, I mean, you never want to end up probably midway, midway through the year. You know, I had a lot of people contact me about so that off the reach now. Um, you know, I talked to a lot of people, a lot of friends and family, people that have been involved in processes like this in the past. And, um, you know, all the feedback I got and all the information I gathered kind of led me to make this decision. What do you remember about growing up in Jacksonville? Man, well, for one, I remember Florida Georgia games. Um, um, yeah, I might have just screwed that one up. But, uh, uh, Georgia Florida games, really. You know, I'm two, I'm two and one there, so you know, we got the wins right now. But um, you know, Jacksonville's a cool place. Remember the beach? Yeah, he loved um, Remember the TPC Sawgrass uh, golf event? That was the first, first time I ever saw Tiger Woods in person. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, no, Jacksonville's an awesome place. It's a part of my childhood. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm still got a lot of friends there. I have. I meet with them tonight. Which uh, interview so far has stuck out to you? Um, you know, I think all of them have. You know, I've had a lot of good conversations with a lot of people. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, definitely, a lot of good uh, feedback. I'm so, telling them everything um, that's going on. Yeah, I'm happy with everything. Um, all the teams I've met with so far. Uh, what I'm doing, I have. what I need to do. And stuff. But, I mean, he's just like the Falcons along, as well. Bills? Met with the Bills as well. Yeah, you, uh, how versatile are you? I know that the NFL really gravitates towards receivers or uh, tight ends that can play in line and flex yeah. out. Mm -hmm. How comfortable are you playing in both spots? I'm um, very comfortable. Um, throughout my career, I've lined up, you know, 
outside yeah, slot yeah, in the backfield. Yeah, in some formations, I even lined up at running back. They don't know what they're expecting. Um, they don't know yeah, what they're that's going that's something through. I, you know, I'd say. That, that I've got a lot of versatility. Um, like that, so I've done it all. I've run routes from every position, and, uh, blocked from every position, being a part of this. and uh, played, you know, every special team as well. So, um, you know, multifaceted. At, at, at every spot on the field. Did you talk to any of the guys from the former Georgia teams that are currently in the NFL Definitely in the back before you made your decision? Um, I want to be better than him. Yeah, I mean, I talked to talk to Nick and I talked to a couple other people, but you, know, you can't really ever you know base base your decision off that. You got to do what's best for you. But like I said, I did get some good feedback from you know from a lot of people and. Um, a lot of people saying I made the right decision. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the tight end, you guys like Gronk, make the next level is something you know, that you know, would want to do more of? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And awesome. um, you know, I'm a competitor for one, so, um, you know, the more balls I catch and, and um, I mean, they've you know, help, great. help get first downs, help get touchdowns, um, you know, anything to help the team catching the ball, I'm all for. Um, you know, I'd love to be split out and, and catch the rock and make plays with it, but, um, yeah, like I said, I'll do anything to help the team win. So, how'd that meeting with the Falcons go? We good. Went real good. What they tell you? Um, you know, really, it was just you know some background stuff, and um, you know, kind of just was going over some football stuff, talking about um, you know some of the stuff I did at Georgia and some of what they do with the Falcons, and um, you know, so it was just some football talk and uh, just getting to know uh, Coach Malarkey. Any unusual questions so far in your uh, process? Um, you know, what's my spirit animal? <laughs> I wish I thought it was kind of funny, but um, and the answer is, um, you know, I think I said I think I said lion, but you know, I kind of wanted to say like golden retriever or something like that. You know, just just a good old boy that loves the ball. You know. Yeah, like he's um, you know, with um, I have there and, and uh, the great offense that they have. You know, What's you the biggest no difference between weapons, Coley and Cheney? You play under both. Or? Um, I would say the biggest difference is Coley's got that. Got that you know, juice. Whether it's fake or not, I don't know. He brings it every day. Um, very energetic guy. Loves to have fun. It's not that Coach Cheney didn't or didn't have energy. Um, he just takes it to a whole other, I guess you could say, Miami level. He brings, starts speaking in Spanish and all kinds of stuff. So what is the juice? Man, I don't know. It's just yeah, I mean, it's just I, contagious, uh, whatever it is. He comes in screaming, yelling, just brings a lot of energy, exudes a lot of confidence with, with his voice. And, um, you know, he's just fun to fun to be in the same room. With. We asked Terry Godwin what the juice was. He couldn't explain it. Michael Hartman couldn't explain it. <laughs> it's Does not anybody... something you can explain. You can just feel it, you know. Okay. Who's the best player you faced this year? <laughs> um, no, he, 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 I don't even know if I want to boost him up because he's probably going to hear this. But Devin White, who's a, a pretty special player. Um, yeah, he's a linebacker that can that can really run, and um, yeah, it's it's pretty uh, not not as common, you know, to have a guy that can run that fast and, and be that big. Isaac, knowing you were going to declare, was there any chance in you not playing in the Sugar Bowl? No, not at all. Um, you know, I'm all about the team, so I wanted to to do as much as I could to help us win that game. You know, that game was important to me, you know, whether it was a playoff game or not. You know, to me, the Sugar Bowl is a big game to play in. It's got a lot of tradition. We were playing a good team. So I wanted to perform well. I wanted to bring a Sugar Bowl you know, victory home for us. You know, unfortunately, we didn't get it done, but that was never a question in my mind. Isaac, why do the tight ends have become so important in the NFL now? What is it about that position that you guys can be like um, You know, I think... We, we cause a lot of uh, matchup issues. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, that if we get lined up on a smaller DB, you know, we can we can expose by the spot. And if we get lined up on a slower linebacker, you know, we can beat him with speed. So I think just the, the, the matchup issues that, you know, we can create is why the tight ends have become, you know, such a bigger part of the NFL. They're getting more athletic, um, you know, bigger, faster, stronger. So, um, and the hands are getting a lot better on them as well, you know, as, as to what you've seen in the past. So, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of there's a lot of dudes on this stage. What was your best game? What was your worst game? Um, I would say my best game was probably Florida. Um, and I would say my worst game was probably LSU. There was a couple of things blocking wise that I wish I could have had back, and the only pass I dropped all year was in that game. Yeah, that's it. Who was the tone setter? If you're gonna pick one guy. Who was the tone setter for your offense? Who was the guy that you guys all kind of looked to uh, as that leader on that side of the football? Um, everything on ten miles that model. You know, I'd probably say on the offensive line was probably Lamont. You know, he was the guy that that brought a lot of juice. Something you also can't explain. You just you just felt it from him. Um, in the wide receiver group, I'd probably say Riley Ridley. Um, I'll claim the tight end group.
and uh, running back was probably Holyfield. Uh, so. Back group, who was the, who was yeah. like the number one guy? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, Alabama. Uh, I'll probably say the mock. I mean, you know, like, three times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.